Hello and welcome to this video series on Composer. Now in this video we're going to go ahead and deal with some of the program settings. Most of the program settings can be left alone for the most part but I want to introduce you to where you go to uh, set them or change them and there's a couple of them in here that I want to make sure you've got them set the same way that I do especially if you plan on following along and doing some of the work that I'm going to be doing which I suggest you do because it makes things easier to learn uh, down the line in some of the upcoming videos within this series but anyway you come on up here to the menu bar and on tools click on options and right here, recent page um, menu, I would just leave that alone. Of course, you have the ability to change this. What they're referring to here is these guys right here, the number of tabs. You can either right-click here to open up a new tab, or as we have it set here, down here at the bottom, always open a document in a new tab. If you were to go up here to open up a document, you got it. It's going to open up in a new tab. So that's what we're talking about here. Now then, uh, retain original source formatting. I would just leave that one checked. That's fine. And once you get a little more familiar with this stuff and you want to come in and poke around, play around, by all means do so. You ain't going to break nothing. Uh, but one thing I do want to make sure you have checked is this cat right here. Save images and other associated files when saving pages. That just keeps keeps things a little organized for you. So in case you import a, an image from another folder on your uh, PC, then this will make sure that either you are prompted to or it will automatically save that image in the appropriate file along with the rest, I'm sorry, in the appropriate folder along with the rest of the associated files. Uh, you know, just as it says here. And this one here, again, we'll get into the publishing aspect of Composer in an upcoming video, but for the time being, yeah, we'll leave it alone. The other thing I want to make sure you have ticked, of course, you can leave that as is too but I want to make sure you have the cascading style sheets editing this box ticked Th because we're going to be dealing with cascading style sheets instead of so much as the uh, HTML formatting or, or not formatting but coding um, and I will explain that now uh, what we're going to be doing here is well as far as the fonts are concerned we can leave these pretty much as is because we're not going to be coming back here and changing the fonts in this respect I do want you to know that you can come here to change your default fonts uh, from what they are to whatever you want them to be and again just in case you didn't know the fonts available here are the fonts that are available on your PC. So what fonts I have on my PC or what fonts I have available here, you may not have the 1942 report or the 28 days later, which is pretty cool actually. Um, because if you, if you do not have them downloaded and installed on your PC, then they're not going to show up here. That's why it's important that you try to not go overboard on some of the cool fonts that you have on your sales pages or your HTML documents. Because if the visitor or the person reading these cool fonts that show up cool on your PC anyway, if they do not have the same fonts installed on their PC, then their browser is not going to recognize that font and it'll just show it as a default, whatever they have set up on their PC as a default font. So keep that in mind. Don't go overboard on the cool fonts. Uh, at least ways as far as an H HTML document. Save the cool fonts for your images. Enough of that. We'll get into that later on. You can pretty much leave this as is because again we're going to be dealing with the changing or establishing of our fonts, styles, colors, size, and so on via the CSS or the cascading style sheets. Now the new page settings. Again for the most part you can leave all this stuff alone because we're going to be dealing with these via our CSS or cascading style sheets. And if you don't want to, you, you can or however you want to do it, you can go ahead and toss your name up here as the author and that's going to, if I'm not mistaken, show up in one of the meta tags as things are being produced here. But again, that's something that we can tackle in the CSS. Now then, as far as the advanced, really it's all fine and dandy just the way that it is. We're going to get into the connection settings here in an upcoming video when we get to the publishing aspect of Composer. The markup, you can leave that alone. That's one of the cool things uh, about uh, Composer is that it does have the ability to validate the HTML, but again, I'm kind of getting beyond things for the scope of this particular video. But one thing I do want to point out, and it's totally up to you, but 
I am not the best speller in the world. Actually, I probably rank right up there in some of the worst spellers in the world. So having this character ticked is going to help me to no end. So that is one thing that I would like to have done on my PC is to check that one. So that being said, we're pretty well cool and good to go there. Just save those settings and we're awesome. That's going to pretty much bring us to the end of this video on the program settings. That's pretty much it. And like I said, anything else we're going to be getting into that kind of goes beyond the uh, basic settings, for example, publishing, we'll get into that at that particular time for that particular video. So for now, thank you much for watching. Have a great day.